Virtual DJ is the single most powerful DJ software on the planet. So why are companies like Rekordbox and Serato on top? Today we talk about that game-changing software. I know this video has taken a while, but you can hear about that here, but uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's just get into the good first. Cross compatibility wise, Virtual DJ is at the top of its class. It works with virtually everything, from Denon, to Reloop, to Pioneer, to Rain, turntables, controllers, it does everything. In fact, it even works with hardware that's no longer recognized by the companies that made it, like, the 57. Remember, this was the first mixer that actually had Serato in the box. So this was their this was their flagship device for for many many years until they moved over to the 62 and 64 and and so on and so forth. But as the software on the Mac and PC side continued to upgrade, they stopped wanting to support this product. So if you were to open up Serato DJ Pro, Serato DJ Pro won't even see this box. It doesn't even exist in its eyes. So when that happened, a lot of people decided, well, it's not really worth it. If it doesn't work with Serato, I'm gonna throw this away. I'm gonna sell it for pennies on the dollar. However, if you have Virtual DJ, VDJ as they like to call it, well, it works. However, a lot of the functions in the box don't work like they did when they were at Serato, but you still have access to both your channels, which is the most important part to DJing. The music is right here, you get your sub channel right here. And then you got this channel. Your kill cue still works. And your left and right work. So you just breathed new light into this box when you were about to throw it away. Can't do that with Serato. You can do it with Virtual DJ. Feature wise, VDJ has all the necessary bells and whistles that you're accustomed to. Cue points, effects, loops, tone play, pretty much anything that another DJ software can do, Virtual DJ can also. If you're coming from places like Serato DJ, well, it actually reads your crates. Now, of course, it has some caveats like readjusting your playlist. Well, you can't do that in the native form because it's only kind of a read only. In order to really get into that, you're gonna have to create your own crate. Now again, because people are gonna say, well, there's a lot of sorting options, but if I were to make a DJ set and I had just thrown all my music into Serato DJ, upon pulling it into Virtual DJ and then reading the crates, I can't readjust. I can adjust based upon how the songs were added in. It does remember that, it remembers date, but I can't say I wanna move this song to spot three and this song to spot five. It won't let you do that. It's just not in the cards. Maybe that'll come in a future update, who knows? But to be honest with you, I'm more impressed that they even gave that an option in Virtual DJ anyway. Unlike Rekordbox, there is no way to actually read a Serato crate. And once you've actually imported all of your crates over, well, Every time you have to update or add new music to Serato, well, you have to basically re-import that playlist. So that's an added step that you have to deal with that you don't have to deal with with Virtual DJ. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about every feature in Virtual DJ. There are plenty of videos out there that will show you that. It's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to tell you my experience from being a Serato user moving over to Virtual DJ. Just for the most part, know this. If another DJ software does it, Virtual DJ likely does it also. I mean, there's a couple of exclusives out there that maybe Virtual DJ doesn't have. You know, Serato Flip, there isn't a flip variant on the Mac side. I believe there's one on the PC side, but I don't use PC. So I know that that's one thing that you're gonna have to deal with if that's important to you. But Virtual DJ has some exclusives 
that I haven't seen any other company offer and they're pretty powerful. So the next two things we're gonna talk about are what I consider to be the biggest selling points of Virtual DJ and that is POI editor and the sandbox feature. Sandbox is kind of what it sounds like. If you're using sandboxes in like a computer application, sandbox basically means within that box, you can do anything you want. There are no rules governing what you do and it's not going to affect the entire system. So let's just say you have two songs that you're currently mixing for your guests, okay? And you have a new song that's coming in. You haven't really used it yet. You haven't tested it. You don't know what the song is. You don't know how long the breaks are, how long the hook is, or where the bridge comes in. Once you hit the sandbox button, it disables the hardware and software, okay? So what is playing out of the main speakers continues to play out of the main speakers, but you can actually go in and load in new songs, new tracks, hit the cue points, throw, throw on the fader left and right just to make sure that you know what you're doing. You can hear verses coming in, you can hear hooks coming in and out. That way you can be prepared for the next transition. I can't express how powerful that is, especially for a new DJ. A lot of new DJs aren't familiar with their music, so this is really gonna help you be a little more flawless as you DJ, as you learn about your new music and what you're playing and for whom you're playing to. As a new DJ, that's, that's really, really good. I think that this is actually where the power lies in Virtual DJ. Imagine if Serato Flip were system-wide. It's a macro editor. It basically takes your workflow and automates it. So certain things that you know you're going to be doing in the future, you know you need to change a panel or change an effect. Well, you can do all that stuff right from in the POI editor, where Flip takes a song and allows you to, to automate the cue point actions. If you wanna jump ahead or maybe make an intro or an outro, apply sensors, well, that's what Serato Flip is best for. And check out my video here, which will show you what I'm talking about. But unlike Serato Flip, it doesn't automate your music. It's not gonna jump ahead or create an intro beat or whatnot. But what it will do is create actions that normally takes you a couple of steps to do. Well, this is gonna automate that. Or say in your auto mix, where you wanna set where your mixes come through, well, you can set that up in your POI editor. That way it knows, okay, at this point, we're going to mix out of this track into the next track. But I think the most powerful thing is it actually opens up hardware features that don't exist from their native software applications. Let me give you an example. So the Pioneer S9, as great as it is, suffers from one fatal flaw. Well, technically two fatal flaws. First fatal flaw is the auxiliary input RCAs are just complete There's some, they break down all the time. If you have an S9 and you use your auxiliary in, trust me, it's gonna happen. The second thing is you don't have access to your pad functions separately. With the POI editor, well, you can actually program in a script. And you can go in there and say, on this song, when I'm playing at this part of the song, I want the cue point to switch to uh, tone play. And now you can keep on going, like you've made all those necessary adjustments and you haven't changed anything, it automatically goes to that point. All right, so real quickly, we are gonna show you how to use the POI editor in some of your competitive scratch routines, or your tone play, or if you, even if you're mixing on the fly and you wanna go into some real creative things. Um, I don't have my needles here today because I left them at the office and uh, that's on me. So we're just gonna use the mixer in-house. So I'm gonna throw it on the sink so we're at least a little bit on, on point with the music. And we're gonna be using, um, we're gonna be using the Roll de Jours by Nas on this side and Sunday Morning by Maroon 5 on this side. We know Nas. So now we are gonna move over to, we're gonna use a little tone play with Sunday Morning to kind of simulate the world is yours piano riff. 
So let's take this, again, this is down and dirty. I'm doing this right on the fly. I got no needles, so I can't really control everything the way I want to, but you can kind of see what I'm saying. So let's go over here to um, the POI editor. And right now we have no Q point, so we need a Q point for one, so. Okay, that's close enough. All right. So now we're going to go into the PLI editor. We're going to go to Q.2, and we are going to change the action of the Q point. So in this case, we're going to go over to the pads because we we'll essentially want to change this pad from normal hot cues to the tone play only on this side. See, with the S9, you don't have the options. It's one or the other. So if I hit the roll, it changes both sides. If I hit slicer, it changes both sides. Now some of the newer mixers have the option to split these, but the S9 doesn't. So we are going to fake it, and we're gonna make the software change the left side pad without affecting this one because we're still gonna be using this one. So again, let's go over to the pad action, and here we go, pads. And in all these actions, we have a whole thing. We're just gonna change the page. So page two, and it tells you, for example, what you'd want to change the page to. In this case, we want to use key Q. So we're going to go right over here. We're going to type in key Q, and that is it. So now when we close this out and we play the song again, when it gets to Q.2, it's going to change this right to it. Done. This side still remains the standard hot cues, so we can keep messing with both, which I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Okay, here we go. Again, this is just rough and dirty options here, but I just wanted to show you kind of the uh, ability that you can have just by using Virtual DJ versus a Serato, where Serato and Pioneer both say, this isn't a possibility. To do what I just did, it's not possible. But clearly, it is, if you just, um, you just get a little creative. That is probably the strongest thing, especially if you're like a competitive DJ and you're doing Red Bull or you're doing DMC. Having those things automate for you, I think that is, that's a game changer. And I think if some people knew that that existed, you know, they wouldn't necessarily need to have the Serato flips doing what they do because, well, some of those actions, the only reason why you do them in the Serato flip is because you can't get to those things quickly. Now, of course, there is some programming involved. I mean, ultimately, you are scripting your actions. And well, while some things can be easy, other things can be fairly complicated. And you really do have to know how to program a little bit. And that's, for some people, is going to be too much and they're not even going to want to touch it. I get it. I look at the scripting and I'm like, that's, I'm a DJ first. I want to rock crowds. I don't want to program the next Facebook. Okay, that's just me. Okay, can we talk about the effects? All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time with this. I'm just gonna say this. The default effects in Virtual DJ are just garbage. Everybody's opinion is subjective, just like mine is, but I know that Rekordbox, I know that Serato DJ, their effects out of the box are hands down so much better sounding than what Virtual DJ is offering you. When I'm using like my S9 or even the Rain 62. Well, I'm indifferent because the effects are built into the hardware, so I can still use that kind of stuff when I want to. I can use the echo outs, I can use the break, and all that stuff is already built in, so I don't think about it. I'm just indifferent to the software platform. But when I move over to my Pioneer SX2 or my newly purchased DDJ 1000, well, then I'm just frustrated because I just don't like the way they sound. They just don't sound good to me. However, 
Um, the plugin system that they use is open format. So in theory, you could go out and buy the plugin effects of your choice. And not only will they work for Virtual DJ, but they'll also work for anything outside of the program. So if you have a DAW and you, you know, you're a producer and you want to use those effects, well, you can use that in your DAW of choice. In your video recording software, pretty much it becomes an effect that is system-wide on your computer. So if you're going to spend the money, then of course, that's, that point makes the most sense.